It's week eight in the Blue Collar Football League, and this week we take a look at two teams that are looking to make a late push up the standings. The Northern Kentucky Wolfpack have won three straight games following a 1-2 and two start, but still find themselves in third place in the Eastern Conference behind the Dukes and the Gladiators. The Southern Indiana Bobcats have alternated wins and losses, including an 18-13 loss to the first place Kentuckiana Cavalry to sit in fourth place in the Western Conference. Both teams punted on their opening possession of the game, and when the Bobcats lined up to punt a second time, the snap went over the head of punter Cantrell Harris. He was able to track it down, but the ball came out yet again, and this time, Jerome McNay was there to recover for the Wolfpack, setting them up inside the Bobcats' 20-yard line. On third down, Patrick James faked the handoff, instead it went to the end zone, and Devontae Solomon pulled it in for the 10-yard touchdown. And on the two-point conversion, Jeffrey Botts took a handoff, found his way into the end zone again, and after one quarter, the Wolfpack led 8 to nothing. The Bobcats punted again, and on the Wolfpack's first play, James looked deep, and Botts hauled it in for a 36-yard pass into Bobcat territory. Penalties derailed the drive, but when the Wolfpack punted, Solomon's kick rolled all the way down to the one-yard line where it was downed. And on Southern India's second play, Trayon Brooks led the charge, stopping the Bobcats in the end zone for a safety that had the Wolfpack's lead at 10 to nothing. After the free kick, the Bobcats finally had something go their way when DJ Clayton forced a fumble and TJ Knighton was there to recover for the Bobcats at their own 34. On third down, Tavares Rochelle rolled out before finding Parker Osborne who made it 15 yards out the midfield. But on fourth down, they were unable to connect again as this incomplete pass gave the ball back to the Wolfpack with under two minutes remaining in the half. After an incomplete pass, James found Solomon over the middle. He slipped a tackle and picked up 16 yards with a penalty on the play moving the ball inside the 30-yard line. The drive advanced inside the 10 when on fourth and one. James got plenty of time before finding Tyree Davis in the back of the end zone for a five-yard touchdown that handed the Wolfpack a 16 to nothing lead at halftime. The Wolfpack got the ball to start the second half, but penalties quickly put them in a second and 38 situation. When James rolled out and took off and picked up 13 yards. On the next play, James looked over the middle, found Tyree Davis who pulled it in and was off for a 30 yard pickup and picked up the first down. Two plays later, James faked and rolled to his right and found Anton Jennings who made a move and made it 33 yards down to the 10. And then James rolled out to his right, looked to the end zone, but was picked off by Cantrell Harris. He returned the ball out to the 30-yard line, and Northern Kentucky's lead remained 16 to nothing after three quarters. The Wolfpack were driving again when, on the first play of the fourth quarter, James rolled out, looked deep, and was picked off by Harris for a second time. The Bobcats turned to their ground game with Nate Woods picking up 13 yards on the next play. After another first down by Woods, Jay Bowers got the handoff. He went up the middle and picked up 17 yards into Wolfpack territory. Then it was back to Woods who went up the middle and flipped ahead for eight yards. Facing a fourth and three, Sean Simmons picked up the yardage needed to keep the drive going. Two plays later, Rochelle kept it himself, went to the left side, cut back right, slipped through some tackles, and gained 15 yards to the 10. And on fourth and goal, Rochelle kept it himself, pushed his way into the end zone for a three-yard touchdown, capping a 15-play, 87-yard drive. But on the two-point conversion that followed, the pass went through the receiver's hand, was picked off by TJ McNeil, keeping the Wolfpack lead 16-6. The Bobcats stopped the Wolfpack on their first two plays, but on third and ten, Botts took a pitch. He found some room on the right side, broke a tackle, made a move, and was off 
for a 66-yard touchdown run that pushed the Wolfpack lead to 22-6 with three minutes remaining. On Southern Indiana's first play, Rochelle went deep. He found Jaden Evans for 32 yards down to the 21-yard line. After an incomplete pass, Rochelle decided to take off. This time, he gained 13 yards inside the 10-yard line. And on second and goal, Rochelle pushed his way into the end zone for a second time, this time for a one-yard touchdown. That gave the Bobcats a chance to make it a one-possession game. But on the two-point conversion, Brooks broke through and stopped Rochelle, and the Wolfpack lead remained 10, 22-12, with under two minutes remaining. That stop loomed even larger when the Bobcats were able to recover the onside kick. But on 4th and 15, Rochelle connected with Simmons. He was stopped well short of the first down. And all that was left was for the Wolfpack to deal out the remaining time to secure their fourth straight win, 22-12 against the Bobcats. The Wolfpack overcame three turnovers and 11 penalties by outgaining the Bobcats by nearly 100 yards, 250 to 158. For the Bobcats, Rochelle threw for 51 yards and was the leading rusher with 46 yards and two touchdowns. Woods added 39 yards on six carries. Osborne was the leading receiver with two catches for 17 yards. Tyrell Williams led the defense with six tackles, while Cantrell Harris had five tackles and two interceptions, and Dylan McGraw had a sack. For the Wolfpack, Botts had 145 all-purpose yards, including the longest run and the longest catch in the game. He had 75 yards rushing, all told, a 36-yard reception, and also led the defense with eight tackles. He also had two punt returns for 34 yards. James completed six passes for 103 yards and two touchdowns, and ran six times for 30 yards. Devontae Solomon had nine yards rushing, 30 receiving and a touchdown, and averaged 44 and a half yards on two punts, while Tyree Davis had two catches for 34 yards and a touchdown. Melvin Broach had seven tackles and a sack on defense, while Trayon Brooks had six tackles, and Darius Chapman added a sack. Looking at all the results for the week, 22 proved to be the winning number, as not only did the Wolfpack win 22-12, but the Cavalry defeated the Spartans 22-6 behind a pair of touchdown runs by Jordan Bender. Meanwhile, the Bison Red, Gladiators, and Tornadoes all picked up wins as well. That means there are not a lot of changes in the standings as everyone remained where they were. The Cavalry are still at first and west at 5-1, while the Tornadoes are second at 6-2. and two. The Bison Red are a game back of the Tornadoes, but now two games up at the Bobcats, who are at 3-5. and five. The Bengals are a half game behind Southern Indiana, with the Spartans a game back of the Bengals. In the Eastern Conference, the Dukes ran in first, a half game ahead of the Gladiators, with the Wolfpack one game back of Columbus at 5-2. and two. Checking out this week's schedule, the Wolfpack will have a chance to catch the Gladiators in a rematch of a game that went to overtime the first time the two teams played. The Dukes come back from a bye by hosting the Bobcats, while the Tornadoes go on the road to face the Spartans. The Cavalry and Bison Red will pick up wins, while the Bengals will be off. Like the standings, there was no movement in the owners' poll this week. The top two teams in the East, the Dukes and Gladiators, remain 1 and 2, followed by the top three teams in the West, Cavalry, Tornadoes, and Bison Red. The Wolfpack remain ahead of the Bobcats at 6. Then comes the Spartans and Bengals, followed by Seminoles and Brethren Knights. <laughs>